Happening now, a statewide investigation is revealing more about New York's COVID-19 nursing home deaths, plus an update on a stolen vehicle chase that ended in a crash yesterday. Well, we have some of those lake effect flakes flying across the area this afternoon. That's going to continue tonight into tomorrow. But boy, those wind chills, nasty. We'll talk about it in a few. The news at noon starts now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. This just into our newsroom, an investigation into nursing home deaths across New York State found the number of fatalities are undercounted. New York Attorney General Letitia James released a report from her office's findings this morning. She says her investigation revealed deaths were undercounted by much as 50 percent. James also says that nursing homes lack the compliance with infection control protocols which put residents at increased risk of harm and death. Now, based on the findings and subsequent investigation, the AG is now probing more than 20 nursing homes who reported conduct during the first wave of the pandemic resulted in concern. The office is the only law enforcement agency in the state specifically mandated to investigate and prosecute abuse and neglect of residents in nursing homes. Reaction to this investigation now pouring in, including from Congressman Tom Reed, who just emailed us a statement saying, Since May of last year, we've worked tirelessly to shine a light on New York's disastrous nursing home policies to ensure such a colossal public health failure never happens again. Reed saying, instead of working with us, Governor Cuomo's only response has been to ruthlessly attack anyone who questions the state's disastrous policies including those from his own party, deny any wrongdoing and hide damning nursing home fatality data that would implicate his administration. Reed says now the state's incompetence and gross negligence have been confirmed by its own attorney general. As he called for last year, Reed go on, goes on to explain that the state uh, needs to be transparent and be held accountable for the actions that have taken place. Now, we have not heard back from Governor Andrew Cuomo following this announcement. We'll, of course, continue to provide updates on our website and mobile app at WNYNewsNow.com. Well, even though Chautauqua County health leaders okayed high-risk sports this week, they're still having some concerns about wrestling. And now they're asking for those activities to be postponed or even canceled. The Chautauqua County Health Department joined four other counties from around western New York to warn against wrestling in a statement yesterday. They're recommending all schools and amateur wrestling teams cancel or postpone their winter seasons. They say the sport involves a lot of contact, which increases the risk of spreading coronavirus. Officials also say masks should not be worn during wrestling matches because they could become a choking hazard. Last week, New York State leaders lifted their ban on high-risk sports, leaving the decision up to the counties. Earlier this week, the Chautauqua County Health Department gave the green light for sports deemed as high risk to resume play as early as next week. Well, the day after President Biden made an ambitious promise for vaccinating the U.S. population against COVID-19, state governors say the White House's plans to speed up distribution won't solve their struggles right away. Karen Kafa with more on this from Washington for us. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky projecting the U.S. coronavirus death toll could climb past half a million by February 20th. But if we are united in action, we can turn things around. Continuing to expand safe, effective vaccination is key to ending the COVID-19 pandemic. That's one reason governors have pressed the new White House for help meeting vaccine demand. All this comes down to supply. Each state will work out its distribution issues. It all comes down to supply. President Biden has said the U.S. will purchase 200 million more vaccine doses from Moderna and Pfizer to eventually boost the total to 600 million. The White House also promised states an increase in vaccine deliveries by about 16 percent over the next three weeks. Some governors say they still need more. 40,000 additional, that is like not going to be the, the big difference in terms of like, oh, this is a game changer, but it, it is helpful. We're going to put it to use. The U.S. vaccination race also aiming to outpace new virus variants. Actually, the vaccines that we're using are still effective. However, 
given that as a, a, a fact now, we have to be concerned looking forward. More shots could be on the way soon. Johnson & Johnson expects to report data on its single shot vaccine by next week. AstraZeneca says it's completed enrollment in its phase three U.S. trial. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Karen, thank you. New York State will be getting more money to help with COVID-19 vaccine distribution administration. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says $466 million from the Federal Emergency Management Agency will be allocated to the state. Well, the UK variant of COVID-19 has been detected here in western New York. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo made the announcement during an update on New York's progress in fighting the pandemic yesterday. He says cases of the variant have been found in Niagara County, along with cases in eight other counties. This brings the total number of cases of the variant statewide to 42. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the variant has been detected in 26 states nationwide so far. We still have to be careful about hospital capacity. And if we run out of hospital capacity, I am telling you today why it will happen. It will happen because a new strain happens and the staff winds up sick. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says it's asking medical developers to make sure tests can detect the virus even as it continues to mutate. As for how the vaccine will handle the new strain, Moderna says two doses of its vaccines should protect against known variations that have emerged. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News now on this uh, Thursday. Hopefully you're enjoying some of that sunshine out there. It's great to see Amanda. Good to see Wallace, Debbie, Joanna, Kayla, Jay, and Roy as well. Hopefully you're all uh, doing well today. Well, now let's get a check of our first defense weather forecast. Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter joins us with that. And Dakota, it was a pretty chilly start to the day out there. Yes, it was. And it's going to remain chilly out there. It's just downright bone chilling. And we have some lake effect snow squalls occurring right now. This is a look over Salamanca. You can actually see some of those uh, lake effect flakes and some of the low visibility there as well. Let's get you right to the radar and we'll show you where the lake effect is. This is pretty much what's left of it now. Just these few little uh, light bands of snow that is coming into Cattaraugus County moving basically like this and that's going to continue through the day and we're still going to see some lake effect snow through the day today tonight and then through the day tomorrow but the bigger story really is going to be the wind and along with the snow we do have a uh, winter weather advisory in place for much of the southern tier in Warren County Pennsylvania that goes until 10 a.m. on Friday and uh, that's for the potential for at least a few inches of snow and also some slick spots as well with temperatures well below freezing we topped out at 25 yesterday we started the day at 15 and 58 and 15 below zero are the record highs and lows for today so through the afternoon today just a few scattered lake effects snow showers uh, uh, the uh, total, uh, the overall accumulation about an inch to maybe upwards of two inches. Wind chill value zero to 10 above, very cold, 14 to 22. Best we'll be able to do today. It stays chilly right through the first half of the weekend. We'll talk about it in detail in a few. All right, Dakota, thank you. Lawmakers in Chautauqua County still have not come to a decision as to who will be the county's next Democratic election commissioner. Current Democratic Election Commissioner Norm Green has held the post for 22 years and now is a holdover after lawmakers pulled his successor Liz Torres' appointment from a vote late last year. Torres was previously approved by the County Democratic Committee for the job. However, some Democrats want Lauren Kent to fill Green's shoes. Green addressed the county legislature during a virtual Zoom meeting last night, saying he's accepted the body's decision to not renew his tenure. February of last year, Chuck Mazzaro called me on the phone and said, the county legislature will no longer support you. I accepted that. I went to work every day, worked hard every day. I didn't give up. I didn't sit there and say, hey, listen, this is it. It's done. I'm finished. Um, I did what I was supposed to do. County lawmakers did not respond to Green's public comments during the meeting last night. Well, Senate Republicans plan to stall efforts to quickly confirm President Biden's pick for Homeland Security today. And as John Lawrence reports, this is happening one day after the DHS issued a warning about an increased threat of extremist violence in the Capitol. 22 days after the deadly siege on the U.S. Capitol, significant tensions remain. There's going to have to be some serious anarchy that goes on 
Otherwise, nothing's going to change. Bring in the firing squad. These are two comments New York Times editor Stuart Thompson obtained from a QAnon chat room in the days surrounding the siege. For them, this is, you know, a big crime that's been perpetrated and they're seeking justice. Thompson says many of these followers are confused that predictions Joe Biden wouldn't take office didn't come true. Instead of saying, you know, the things we were believing in were nonsense, they say we were relying on the wrong person. We were relying on Trump to do it all, and now it's up to us to do it. The Department of Homeland Security is warning the U.S. that extremists, some of whom oppose the Biden administration, could continue to mobilize to incite or commit violence. What soft locations across the country may be targeted by these folks? Does it include critical infrastructure? Does it in include houses of worship? We need to be prepared uh, for all threats uh, against across a, a multitude of venues in this country. Although at least 150 people have been federally charged in the Capitol attack, DHS officials say the domestic extremists may feel emboldened by the siege. I'm John Lawrence reporting. John, thank you. The Department of Homeland Security officials say this heightened threat environment will likely remain in place for weeks. Wednesday's bulletin from the DHS expires in April. Next, here's some good news for restaurants across New York who battled to reopen. But first, the latest in a stolen vehicle pursuit. What charges now pending against the driver? Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Sorry about that. No, no, I've been staying at my dad's place because of everything. Where are we going? He's good. Yeah, I know, we keep missing each other. Uh, I've been working out of my dad's house, doing some reading. I should be working out more. I just feel like I'm drowning. Navigating these times can be tough, but while you care for your loved one, you also need to care for yourself. Go to aarp.org caregiving for free mental health and self-help tips. Remember when you were a kid, huddled around the television, waiting for your school to close? Well, we don't get snow days. When winter weather hits, count on the First Defense Weather Team for a look into the future where the snow is headed next. Live radar showing you the scope of the storm. And real-time reports from the field. So when it matters most, stay with First Defense Weather. Catch your First Defense forecast daily on WNY News Now with coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. And welcome back. The man who allegedly led police on a vehicle pursuit in Chautauqua County yesterday has been identified. The county sheriff's office says 27-year-old Jerome Rogerson, a town of Chautauqua resident, allegedly stole the vehicle from the Keeler dealership here in Washington Street overnight. Now this morning, de er, over yesterday morning, deputies say Rogerson was spotted driving the vehicle on Route 60 in the town of Dunkirk where a police pursuit ensued. Deputies say the man attempted to invade police by traveling west in the eastbound lane of I-90. Due to public safety risks, they called off that chase, but a short time later, police again made contact with him on the interstate. Deputies then pursued him through the towns of Portland, Westfield, and Ripley. Now, while in the town of Ripley, they say Rogerson used the vehicle to strike two sheriff's cars. He then lost control of his car and crashed it down an embankment. Deputies and the sheriff's canine Drake then took him into custody. He faces several charges, including reckless endangerment and criminal possession of stolen property. Police say additional charges are pending as well. Well, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced yesterday that he is easing a handful of remaining orange zone restrictions in the state in order to help businesses. 
and the Democrats cited the post-holiday dip in the number of infections after a period in which he had surged to more than 114,000 cases in one week. Eliminating the zones will allow those restaurants to open their indoor dining again, albeit at half capacity. Indoor dining is still blamed and banned in New York City, but Cuomo promised to come up with a plan by Friday to address how restaurants might be able to reopen their services too. His administration is considering whether to allow indoor dining at the city at 25%. Now, during the past seven days, the state has averaged around 12,000 new infections per day, a rate it last recorded in December. Well, a major policy change involving federally backed mortgage loans, the real estate agents and lending agencies are praising the Housing and Urban Development Department's move to allow deferred action for childhood arrivals, also known as DACA recipients, to qualify for federal housing administration loans. As Mandy Gaither reports, the decision opening a new opportunity for many so-called dreamers wanting a piece of their American dream. And experts say it's a move that could help the economy overall. A new door of opportunity, a shift in federal policy making it easier for dreamers, U.S. residents with DACA status, to buy a home. Being able to buy real estate as a dreamer has been super important to me because it allows me to, uh, to build wealth for me and my future generations. They're now eligible for the loans backed by the Federal Housing Administration. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development announced the update last week. This new policy opens up the field of mortgage options for dreamers, giving them access to a wider variety of affordable, accessible paths to home ownership. Since the announcement, some loan officers have seen a spike in interest. The volume of calls that, uh, that we received uh, last week compared to before, it probably increased by maybe 70 percent. We see the value of DACA recipients. We've offered conventional loans for DACA recipients from day one. To be clear, Dreamers have always qualified for conventional loans. This move opens up another option for those who may not have the traditional 20 percent down typically required for those types of loans. That's because an FHA loan requires only a 3.5 percent down payment and a minimum 580 credit score. Now people can buy a duplex, for example, put three and a half percent down, live on one side and rent out the other and maybe they're living for free. Real estate experts expect this move to create a positive domino effect. When a dreamer buys a home, there are so many different people involved, so many people like that that do get paid, that stimulate the, the economy. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy You're Gaither. Looking, uh, 177. Mandy, thank you. Other FHA requirements remain in place for all potential borrowers of FHA loans, including the purchase of a property as a principal resident, proof of valid Social Security number and a valid work permit. Well, massive swarms of cicadas are set to return to the East Coast this spring following a 17-year hibernation. The insects, insects known as brood 10, have been underground eating sap from plant roots since 2004. Well, entomologists say the periodical cicadas are generally programmed to conserve their energy for up to 17 years, which means this is the year they're expected to start appearing this May in more than a dozen states from Georgia to New York. So don't worry, though, because the insects won't actually invade our homes or carry our pets. They don't even cause lasting damage to established trees. However, they do tend to make a lot of noise, and their courting and mating sounds can be uh, very loud, almost as loud as a lawnmower. The bunks live for up to four weeks, and then their offspring head back underground for another 17 years. Experts call it a biological phenomenon that happens nowhere else on Earth. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about. Let us know what you think about that and more in the comments down below. Dakota, it is the the Do year we have of any 2020. Of the spray to get rid of that. Stuff? Yeah, the bug spray. Yeah, the bug spray. When, when I saw this story this morning, the I'm troll like, you know spray. what? It's the crazy time we've had last year, really, if you think about it, into 2021. Why not have crazy cicadas that hibernate for 17 years come out this year? Yeah. Why not? Whatever. Speaking of somebody <laughs> who's hibernated, Andrew. Andrew come is over here. here. Yeah. Get into so, the shot very quickly. 
He is in Andrew the weather Stevenson's center in the house. today. Six feet, gentlemen, six feet. There you there. go. <laughs> uh, he is in the weather we're office today. We're all COVID free. Today. You, yes, so you're, okay. you're both tested negative for COVID-19. Yep. So you're here, you're in the, the, the studio, which is great. Andrew does an amazing job with the uh, weekend weather and we're, we're happy to have him in to give you a hand today. Although uh, our internet is being weird. I, yeah. I, I, I guess, you know, I always joke, Dakota, that Jamestown's like two years behind everybody else. Do you, do you remember me t talking yes. about that? Mm -hmm. How trends and things like that? Well, I guess we're two days behind that big internet outage that happened yeah, earlier I know. this week. There was a big internet outage that occurred across <laughs> the East Coast. Uh, I think it was two days ago or something like yeah. that. Now so we're behind. We what, whatever. So. We're here. We're here yeah, with you. That's that's, that's what matters. For now. For anyway, uh, let's take a look at uh, weather here and uh, wanted to continue with the snowfall here because recently over the past week, we have had some decent snowfall here. At least, I would say, at least an inch gauged here almost every day over the past week, except for Thursday where we had uh, two hundredths of an inch. Nothing officially yesterday and so far at the airport today, we've gauged an inch so far. So we'll see where we end up here uh, as we go throughout the end of the day. Hey, how about this? This actually isn't really local. But since Andrew's here today, I had to put this in. Andrew's girlfriend uh, lives in uh, Chicago and she made a guinea pig. Is this correct? Okay, yes. He said yes. This is a guinea pig uh, that is made out of snow in Chicago. So, Emily, thank you for that. We know that you're uh, a, a watcher of us. So, I uh, wanted to thank Emily for sending that in. Hunters WX on Twitter and the First Defense Weather page on Facebook. Use that hashtag, MyLocalWX. It's cold. Everywhere, 17 right now here in town. Also Mayville, 19 in Fredonia. Good afternoon to you. 16 Climber, 19 Warren, 20 in Titty Ute, and 17 in Randolph. Temperatures are not going to budge too much from where they are now. So those are pretty much going to be our daytime highs through the day. Winter weather advisory stays in place for much of the southern tier until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Also for southern Erie County, Pennsylvania, does not include the city of Erie itself. Andrew and I were having a discussion about this this morning. But uh, officially, southern and northern Erie County, Pennsylvania's are different, so they issue warnings differently. Confusing? I know. But uh, it'll just take too long to explain. The radar just shows you this is what's left of the uh, snow that we had coming through. A few little pockets of lake effect. They're going to ultimately continue continue through the afternoon and into tonight. This is snowfall by tomorrow afternoon. By this time tomorrow, this might be a bit underdone by a bit. We could be looking at about one to two inches general. And once you get into the highest hills of the southern tier, the darker blue strips, you could see upwards of two to three inches, especially by tomorrow and then and then another inch or two on Friday. So that's the reason why the winter weather advisory was issued. But this is the bigger story. It's really going to be the wind chill values. And again, wind chill is the real feel temperature when you combine the air temperature and the wind together. So so wind chill values are going to remain pretty nasty through the afternoon. Watch by a 640 tomorrow morning. All of us are sub zero here. So tomorrow is going to be a very frigid day. The wind chills are going to be nasty. And then as we go with, uh, and then as we go through the day on Friday into Saturday, the wind chills are still going to remain nasty through the day. Actually, some spots, especially by Saturday morning, could get close to wind chill advisory criteria, which is 15 below zero. So we'll see what happens with that. If a wind chill advisory is issued, we'll let you know. So the inland forecast for today on the zone forecast, yeah, enjoy your temperatures because that's pretty much going to be it. 18 is probably going to do it through the day. We're in the deep freeze with lake snow squalls. How about the future? Next seven days coming up right now. 19 degrees tomorrow, just absolutely bitter cold. We still cold on Saturday, at least a few pieces of, at least a few peaks of sunshine. A few flakes Sunday 28. We're watching a coastal storm for early next week that may brush the region, but uh, the uh, timing still needs to be determined on that and some partial sunshine could be returning on Wednesday. Justin? All right, Dakota, thank you. Well, Senator Bernie Sanders made a splash when he wore those knit mittens at the inauguration. You've probably seen the meme, right? Well, that fashion moment has helped him raise now $1.8 million for charity. The Vermont senator has been selling Chairman Sanders merchandise inspired by the now infamous photo of him sitting in a chair with his arms and legs crossed. Sanders says the money will go to several charities in his state. He started selling the items on his campaign website on Thursday, and guess what? They sold out in under 30 minutes. Well, a Wall Street game is getting rigged by a group of newcomers. A small group of small-day traders organized on Reddit have a shot at shares of GameStop up to 1,700% this month. So their target, well, the establishment. These mostly young traders are buying the stock in droves to raise the price because hedge fund managers have shorted it. 
That's when an investor who thinks a stock is going to go down borrows shares today and promises to purchase it at a later date at whatever price it's trading at then. The Reddit traders have caused a massive headache for professional investors who are trying to buy the stock back at hugely inflated prices. Experts say no-fee trading sites like Robinhood have uh, made these investments possible, given smaller traders much more power than they've had in the past. Many of them will have an axe to grind with Wall Street investors who they see it as having manipulated the system for decades. The individual traders are also targeting other troubled stocks. They bid up the price of movie theater chain AMC 200% in a single day yesterday. Analysts warn to stay away from the battle as the inflated stocks will almost definitely crash as quickly as they rise. Well, this is pretty cool. M&M is giving fans a sneak peek of its new Super Bowl ad. The 30-second spot will premiere virtually on Zoom, which spokes Candy Yellow on February 3rd. The first 50,000 people to register on the M&M's website will be able to participate in the sweet treat. But everyone can see the ad during the first commercial break after the Super Bowl kicks off. A reminder, that's coming up Sunday, February 7th on CBS. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now today as we get a check of uh, local news that matters to you. And it's definitely looking nice out there. Uh, here's a live look over downtown Jamestown. And I'm absolutely loving this sun, Dakota. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wish it was a little colder. It's almost like this is what Western New York's uh, Mother Nature so personality gives us. wait a minute. Wait, us. wait, wait, wait. Hmm. It's 17 degrees, and you're saying you want it colder? No, no, no. I, I just, What's the matter with you? I, I wish it wasn't as cold. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Oh. Uh, it's 17 degrees, but you look outside, and you're thinking it's like, it looks like it should be in the 40s. Yeah. Ooh. Like, don't, like, that's the one thing is days like this are absolutely beautiful, my friend, mm -hmm. but uh, it's deceiving. It really is. Yes, I know. And, you know, especially in the winter season, that sunshine is very deceptive, you know, especially when you have temperatures that are this cold. Let's take a look at uh, tonight's forecast very quickly here. So nine in the valleys tonight, 15 at the Lake Erie shoreline, scattered lake effects, no showers, an additional one to four inches of accumulation on top of what you already got. The wind chills are going to be nasty, about zero to almost 10 below through the overnight with that northwest wind. And very quickly, wanted to make one comment. Uh, Robin Hood blocked uh, this morning the training of GameStop and of the uh, AMC, so you can no longer trade stocks for those two companies on uh, Robin Hood. Gotcha. So I guess if you were trying to get in on it, then uh, you can't now. But that's the th that's why I keep my money uh, under my mattress because it, it just Whoop. gets so complex. Whoop. It's just safer to put the Benjamins down there. Well, you see, I've thought about <laughs> investing. Yeah. Because I have stash, and I thought about. I've used stash that. too, and it's actually pretty right. good. But the only thing is, I'm not an investor. I'm a. I'm like I don't know what I'm doing. So right. now with all this, it's like, so what? Is the stock market going to crash now? Right. Are we going to have... I don't think so. I doubt it will. But we don't Fearful, want fearful. Danger, Will Robinson. We might be back tomorrow. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> That's it for us today, though. Uh, we will be back tomorrow, I promise, hopefully. <laughs> Who knows? Let us know. Do you want us back tomorrow? That's a dangerous question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, we'll leave you with this look over Chautauqua Lake. More of that sunshine out there today. If you can, soak it up, my friends. We're back tomorrow, TGIF edition. Uh, we do have to come back because it's our Pet of the Week segment. We, right. we can't leave the furry friends unattended, so be sure to tune in. Especially with this cold weather. Oh, Bring yeah, them inside. No. Bring them in. Bring them in. Every single one of them. <laughs> have a great day. <laughs>